Hi, and welcome to the second video of sequencing Microsoft Office 2010. My name is Men van der Plas, and in this video, I'm gonna do the actual sequencing of Microsoft Office 2010 on FV46. So, since this is the second video, if you haven't catched the first video, be sure to check it out because it shows the preparation of the sequencer machine. And I'm gonna pick it up where I left off in the previous video, which is starting the actual sequencing. So once you've prepared your sequencing machine, you can start sequencing Microsoft Office. I'm going to install all the uh, Microsoft Office application. You can choose to do otherwise, but it keeps the demonstration nice and simple. So I'm gonna start the Microsoft application virtualization sequencer here. I'm gonna create a new package and I'm gonna give it a descriptive name, something like Microsoft Office 2010. I'm going to install in a 8.3 directory underneath the virtual Q drive. And I'm going to use a specific naming convention. You can choose the naming convention you like, but be careful in some steps. Later on in the process, I'm going to use this path in several command lines. So if you're going to copy and paste these command lines and you've installed to a different installation path, be sure to update these command lines as well. So the sequencer is currently monitoring, so we can do the installation. It's a best practice not to use any install on first use options in the Windows installer. Uh, either install or don't install the applications. You do not have to activate the Microsoft Office installation during sequencing. You can start your preferred applications and to configure them properly. And I'm going to start the Microsoft Office installation. So this is the first screen. I'm gonna accept the license terms. I'm gonna continue. I'm selecting customize here because I want a custom path. And I'm gonna select all of the applications of Microsoft Office to install from my computer. I'm gonna alter the file location to this location. Now it's not necessary to install two levels deep, but I'd like to do so anyway because it keeps my package nice and clean. You might want to stay away from spaces though, because I saw some issues with spaces in the path during my preparations. You do not need to include any user information at this point, and you can start the installation. So once the installation is finished, you can select close. Now the first thing that I want to do is move the start menu from start menu programs Microsoft Office to start menu programs Microsoft Office 2010. The reason for this is that most of the Microsoft Office applications install in Microsoft Office start menu. And if this particular package ends up on a machine that already has Office, the short shortcuts will end up in the same directory. Now you can do this afterwards in the sequencer as well, but the most easiest way is to do it right here. To make the AppV deployment kit work, you have to alter some registry keys. You can do this manually, but I've created a couple of command lines that automatically does this for you. You should run this from an elevated command prompt. You can see all the operations successfully completed. And you can check in the registry. These keys just got added through that script. So the next keys you have to add for SharePoint integration, but they are for the 32-bit OS installation only. So the 64-bit OS installation, if you're running a 64-bit OS on the sequencer machine, then the keys that you have to add are differently. You can find them in the prescriptive guidance of sequencing Microsoft Office 2010 from Microsoft. 
Now these commands hold both regadd and regdelete keys. So the reason for this is that the sequencer has to capture the keys as being deleted during the monitoring process. So they end up as a deleted key in the virtual environment. Now a deleted key is not the same thing as if the key wasn't present at all. If the key wasn't present at all, the virtual environment would still see the local registry of the client machine. So we can check for these keys because they got added and they got deleted, but we can see that the operation completed successfully. So that's good. Okay, so the next couple of registry keys we're going to add are for SharePoint integration. And be careful here because I'm using an installation path. So I'm, I've installed Microsoft Office to queue office 2010v one But if you've installed to a different directory, you have to alter these keys before you launch them in the registry. So let's see if those got added to the registry properly. In proc server, as you can see, we actually altered this uh, location. So we can stop the command prompt. And the following needs to be executed after monitoring. So we can stop monitoring now. But first, make let's make sure that the actual installation works. So we go to Q, Office 2010. Let's start up, for instance, WinWord. So WinWord seems to be running. And when it comes to configuring updates for Microsoft Office, it's a best practice not to allow any automatic updates in the environment of a virtual application. So I'm going to select don't make any changes here and click OK. So let's start up Excel, which is working also. PowerPoint. Now you don't want to launch all the applications of Microsoft Office, especially not the ones that aren't going to be touched by the AppV deployment kit. So these include, uh, for instance, Outlook and OneNote. So everything uh, seems to be running properly. So I'm going to shut down the sequencer. I'm going to stop monitoring. So I'm going to click next here and then I'm in the configure applications screen. Now there's a couple of things you need to do in the configure applications screen. Here we have to add the additional applications to enable the proxies. So we're going to add an application for the proxy mail to functionality. We're going to add an application for the proxy virtual search host functionality. We're going to add a application for SharePoint support, and we're going to add an application for proxy virtual mail control panel item. So here you see all the applications that were added by Microsoft Office. Now let me first start by adding the applications. So I'm going to copy this path. And it's very important to keep your names strict because you're going to use those names uh, later on. So I'm going to use copy and paste here. The version numbers are also important. So you can choose to set all the version numbers during the configure application part of the wizard. But I'm choosing to alter them afterwards. And that's because I will be using some third party tooling which makes this process a little bit more easy than in the wizard. There's one thing you might want to check because by default, every application creates a start menu location, but for the proxies, this is not necessary. So you can choose to clear the start menu checkbox here. 